Hi and welcome to week 29 of U.S. history. So this week we'll be delving into the tumultuous events of the 1930s, a period marked by the rise of dictatorships and escalating global tensions. We'll be exploring five key topics that shaped the course of world history during this pivotal era. So we'll begin by, excuse me, so we'll begin by explaining the um, rise of dictatorships in the Soviet Union, Italy, Germany, and Japan in the 1930s. In the aftermath of World War I and the Great Depression, political instability and economic turmoil provided fertile ground for the emergence of authoritarian leaders. In the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin consolidated power through ruthless repression and industrialization. In Italy, Benito Mussolini established a fascist regime, promoting nationalism and militarism. In Germany, Adolf Hitler rose to power with promises of national renewal and racial purity. While in Japan, militarists seized control, pursuing expansion, expansionist goals in Asia. Next will be summarizing the acts of aggression by Italy, Germany, and Japan. So these regimes were aggressive and they pursued territorial, territorial expansion uh, through military conquest and military strength. Italy invaded Ethiopia in 1935, seeking to establish an African empire. Germany reoccupied the Rhineland in 1936 annexed Austria in 1938, and later invaded Czechoslovakia in 1939. Meanwhile, Japan la launched invasions of Manchuria in 1931 and China in 1937, escalating tensions in the Asia-Pacific region. Next, we will analyze the responses of Britain, France, and the US, the, the allies, to the aggressive regimes. So initially, the policy of appeasement prevailed as Western powers sought to avoid confrontation and preserve peace through diplomatic concessions to the aggressors. However, as the threat of war loomed larger, Britain and France began to rearm and adopt a more assertive stance. Meanwhile, the US pursued a policy of neutrality focusing on domestic concerns and avoiding entanglement in foreign conflicts. Uh, we'll be then taking a closer look at Roosevelt's foreign policy in the mid-1930s and the great debate between isolationists and interventionists concerning what was going on in Europe. So President Franklin D. Roosevelt faced mounting challenges abroad as he sought to balance domestic priorities with growing international tensions. While Roosevelt expressed sympathy for the victims of aggression and supported collective security measures, such as the League of Nations, he also faced strong opposition from isolationist forces in Congress and the public as well, who favored non-intervention and neutrality. Finally, we're gonna take a close look at how the US became more involved in the conflict. So despite a desire to avoid involvement in foreign wars, the U.S. gradually shifted towards a policy of supporting the Allies, especially after the outbreak of World War II in Europe in 1939. Measures such as the Lend-Lease Act provided crucial aid to Britain and other Allied nations, while the attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan in 1941 ultimately propelled the U.S. into full-scale participation in the conflict. So to conclude, the 1930s were a time of upheaval and uncertainty as the world grappled with the rise of dictatorships, acts of aggression, and the looming specter of global conflict. By examining these key, con key topics, we gain insights into the complex interplay of political, economic, and ideological forces that shaped the course of history during this turbulent era. So I hope that you found this Video, video and preview to be fruitful. I look forward to seeing you all and working with you in class. Thank you.